Well, maybe not the newest case, the Lian Li 011 Dynamic, designed by DeBauer, might just be the perfect case for you. And in this unboxing and overview video, I'm going to show you everything the case has to offer, at least out of the box. You'll see more from me soon on this. Welcome to this Bites for You. So as I mentioned already, we're going to be doing an unboxing and an overview of the Lian Li 011 Dynamic designed by DeBauer. So you know that it was designed to keep everything nice and cool. Lian Li typically does a great job as it is with their designs, but with DeBauer on their side, it's going to be an awesome case. But anyway, come over here real quick. Let's do the unboxing and let's see what's inside. All right, so I'm just going to open it up like this. All right, so right out of the box, right on the very top. Thank you for your purchase. We're excited to have you join us in our mission to empower PC enthusiasts. Our goal is to make your entire PC building experience an excellent one. If you encounter any problems, please contact us at that address there. So a little personal, pretty nice. Don't forget to snap a shot of your final build and share it with us by using hash Lian Li. Kind of would have preferred the white one that they sent me, the black one. That's okay. All right, now let me bring you a little bit closer. All right, so we can already see the side panel, just straight glass. It's kind of nice because there is no way here to unscrew it, so there isn't any hinge or anything that's just going to make it look weird or nothing sticking out here. So it's nice and clean. So they want you to unscrew these two screws up here. Slide this out. Okay, and then we can see along the top of the case, little filter here for liquid cooling, I should say. And it is magnetic. So then here we can see where you can attach the liquid cooling unit right over here. Screw the screws through there. Okay, and now to take the glass off, you can't pull it off this way or this way or this way or this way. And actually, let me uh, put some romantic music on for you. Unfortunately, it wasn't very epic. Okay, so now in order to remove this glass, you have to lift it now that you've removed that top panel and then you can easily take it out. Great step. And then we can see along here to reduce noise. See this foam right over here. That way, if there's any vibration against this aluminum right over here, you don't hear any kind of rattling. Nice step there. And I did forget to show you along the top of the case. This is what it looks like here. This is where your liquid cooling unit can breathe from. And these were the thumb screws that I undid to slide the panel out. Let me bring you in a little closer. Okay, so along the bottom of the case, we can see some more holes here. And there is some, also magnetic, some a filter down here. You can see two trays there for your SSDs, 2.5 inch trays. Now we can see a recessed here, or we can say the motherboard tray is brought up some, but recessed here so that you can put in a liquid cooling unit and we'll get to the back of the case in one second. Okay, so back here there are eight PCI slot or PCI slots. So for expansion, look at that, Lian Li DeBauer, nice, comes with his tag. And then here for some cables, some grommets for some cables, and then some holes down here for cables as well. And then the motherboard opening here, the back plate. Along the front over here, just basically 
glass there. Okay, so the cooling is going to come from here. I'll get into the cooling in a little bit. Coming around the back here, there is not a place here for a 120 millimeter fan or 140. You might be able to fit an 80 in there. You don't want an 80. It's going to make your system loud. He's designed this or helped to design this to keep airflow and to keep everything and noise optimal. So we'll work with this. We'll see how good it is. Okay, then right over here is where the rear IO for your motherboard goes, your USB connections and everything right here. Then right over here is the spot for a power supply, but then right under it, another spot for a second power supply. Pretty cool. And now I'm gonna show you the back of the case. All right, so the back of the case, this is towards the front. This is where you can mount a liquid cooling unit. Well, not exactly right here, but right behind that. Here you can see is where it breathes. And then here is where the bottom of your power supplies would be. The fans would be facing out here. The air would come out through here. Okay, so same thing that we did on the other side. We just lift that, okay. And then these are removable magnetic filters as well both of them all right so really interesting part here again here is where you would put either your radiator or your fans more than likely your radiator now between here and this part of the case there is going to be two inches a little over two inches of space maybe two and two sixteenths or so of space. So you can definitely fit a radiator right in here. Right over here is where they have an opening already for a power supply. We can see we have some tools, right some extras right over here, which I'll get to in a different way. And then we have some of the IO cables right down here. I'll get to all that in one second. So it's really nice the way that they've designed this. It's incredibly interesting. So. The case is 17 and a half, 17 and a half inches long from the feet to the very top of the case is also 17.5 inches long. And a little under 10.5 inches deep. So you can, along the front, you can also remove the front glass. If you want to remove it for cleaning or maybe for sliding something in on the front or just totally remove it, totally up to you. Unfortunately, not epic either there. <laughs> okay, there is a USB-C connection here, and then we have front panel audio, and then USB right up here, and then the power button. It looks backlit, not 100% sure just yet, but we'll go over that very soon. Okay, now this part is very hard to get a good picture of. So we can see this is where the motherboard goes. There is about maybe two inches of elevation there which is great because we can see there's one two three grommets there so you can slide cables through there or into there coming back around onto where the motherboard goes and it's very hard to get good lighting into this case because well it is black Along the back of the case, right over here where it's closed off currently to put up another power supply, but it's held together with a thumb screw. We can find two more spots for drive. So, okay. So here held in with these two uh, 3.5 inch cages for drives, we can just slide them out. And then we can either put one 2.5 or two 2.5s in there and just slide them in out of sight. And here's the other tray. 
make it a little bit easier to see. All right. So, very nice the way that they hide everything here. Okay, and then there are some more holes over here so that you can mount different things in there, maybe slide some SSDs or something, again, out of sight, out of mind. You know they're there, but you just can't see them. Okay, and for the front I.O. Now, here are the cables that come for the front I.O. Here is the USB 3.0 header. This is for the power button and the reset switch and the HDD LED and the power LED all right there. HD audio. This guy right over here is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C header inside of this little white box. Okay, these look to be like different screws for your 3.5 inch drives or your 2.5 inch drives. And then another baggie with assorted screws. This looks like just a rubber brick. Sure is rubber with 3M adhesive. So I'll figure out where that one goes. I think it might be for the power supply. And then some Velcro. Looks like four strips of Velcro. Velcro together. Then a Lian Li 011 dynamic installation guide. Yeah, so this rubber pad is to go in between the power supplies if you do have two power supplies installed inside of your system. Okay, so then you can get a better look and feel of the case. Again, this is in the back where the liquid cooling unit would go. You can see that gap right over here between here. Okay, then here is where power supply would go. Another one would go right in between here. Then right over here would be that rubber piece so that there won't be any vibration. Okay, we can see along the back here again where everything would go. Then inside the case, these two trays right over here with thumb screws that are a little tight. Now mind you, if you don't want them there, you can just unscrew them. And remove them between there and here. There is eight inches of space. This is again along the front. I took off the glass. And then your ports right up here. Along the top of the case. Again, we can see that here. Here is for that elevation of the tray. You can see how that goes into place there. Now, the EVGA Z390 board, the one I will probably be using in here, but it will be a different board for a different project I'm working on, is going to go right here. The memory is right up here, so 
I'm a little concerned how the liquid cooling unit is going to work there, but I'll do that off camera so you guys don't have to watch that horrible piece. Of course, I do have the option of putting the liquid cooling unit there as well. Okay, and then we can see down here the feet of the case, how much space there is in between there. All right, one inch of space. And there is that filter there. And you can remove it, of course. Just take it off. And let's explore the bottom of the case real quick. So coming along the bottom of the case, we can see there are four rubber feet there just to keep that vibration down. And there is space right over here so that you can put in some fans either to exhaust air out of the case or blow air into the case because you do have one inch of space that gives you plenty of room. And then of course that filter so you don't get any dust or dirt or hair or whatever could be in the air around your house. So I am very excited to build inside of this case. You will see more from me soon. So stick around to this Bites for You for more. Iggy out. See you guys.